Hey what is going on guys, it's Tharshay and welcome back to another video on the channel. Today we're back with another Lord of the Rings Rise to War video on my Season 9 War of the Ring campaign. So hope you guys do enjoy this video and if you do please do drop a like, comment and subscribe to the channel and don't forget to turn on those post notifications. Anyway, let's get straight into it. So first things first, you guys know how it is, we're gonna go and have a look at the map, then we're gonna have a look at the season objectives and stuff, and then I'm gonna tell you a bit about what we were doing and what I'm up to at the moment. So if we go and look at the map first of all and we zoom out. You can see we're dominating like we're absolutely dominating here blue or oh, you know good owns pretty much everything the only keepers we don't own are you know one or two that we just haven't bothered with yet as well as you know, those few that evil have been able to hold on to for now so yeah there's been uh, quite a few stuff that has happened though there was a massive fight over at orthanc and at rohan and i mean helm's deep because of the uh stuff from the fellowship so we go over to the season objectives and we look at the fellowship. So we're all the way at, we just finished uh, number seven, which is the breaking of the fellowship. And then we're halfway to eight, but we were here at the, so there was a side thing here where we had to fight for Isengard and for Helm's Deep. So evil was sieging Helm's Deep and good we had to take Isengard and, you know, flood Isengard uh, with, you know, basically what the ends did. And we were able to win that, thankfully. The fellowship right now, is all the way over here in the dead marshes. If we have a look at see, yeah, it's only Frodo and Sam at the moment. And then they're gonna obviously try and get over here to the Black Gate, and then they're gonna end up finding a way around the Tower of Sirithungal. So yeah, it's gonna that's gonna be uh that's gonna be pretty interesting because they're gonna come over here to Minas Morgul, go through Sirithungal, then try to get to Mount Doom. And right now we own all the land around it. The only thing we don't own is Baradur, which is obviously Mordor's capital. So we're gonna have to see whether we can take that or what's gonna happen over there. But we own all the surrounding land. So right now, if we look at the influence of speed, we can see that it's uh, you know definitely in our favor here. So that is great. So yeah, this is the current map as it is. There's a big open up here in the north uh, at Gundabad. So that is Gundabad fighting a bunch of the Erwar fellowships. And then there's even some Mordor, Lothlorien, and Rune fighting up there. Small warpen here between Isengard and Lothlorien, but there was much bigger warpens here before between uh, Orthanc and Helm's Deep. There was like a 9-10 million warpen. Over here at the Dead Marshes, uh, as you can see, everyone is currently battling it out over here to you know try to clear the way for the Fellowship. So good is pushing, yeah, we're gonna try push for the Black Gate. Though you can see a bunch of evil AI over here, so we're gonna have to see what the AI do, you know, how that ends up working out. A lot of scout camps, oh my god, there's a lot of scout camps from evil, a lot of their players here as well, fortresses, everything. This is gonna be a big fight, because, you know, if they can hold the black gate, they can stop us getting in, so that is that is pretty big. And then over for my fellowship ring, so we've been fighting up here by Dorwinian. Uh, there was some bigger uh, warp pins, but now it's dropped a bit. So we have one pin here between Mordor and Ring, and then Fury, Nold, and TBBK, but basically just Wild and Ring fighting over here. 400,000 participants, 100k deaths. And another pin over here between Nold, Wild, Ring, and Odin. And uh, we're currently trying to take the crossing over here. And once we secure the crossing, we can clear our side of all the red tiles. Uh, you know, push their side, break their forts, reap, teleport their players away, and then we're trying to get over to the keep over here. So target is the keep to try and surround that and get that. But evil been putting up a massive fight. Right now it's just been, you know, absolutely back and forth. So yeah, you can see you can just see all the march lines going back and forth at the moment. Yeah, and all the territory that's currently uh you know in contest. If we go to my battle reports, uh yeah. I mean, pretty decent report. Level 41 A1 against level 45 Kaldun. Gear-wise, he's not, yeah, not bad on gear. I'm not sure what respect level he is though. And if you look at my A1, you can see she's got the Cutlass, fully refined, fully strengthened. We've got the Colted Armor, fully refined and fully strengthened. It especially would help against like a Sauron or Saruman. You know, anyone who does focus damage. Horseman's Helm, and then we have the hit lane. But I am wondering guys if if any of you, uh, you know, what would you guys think? Should I go with a hit lane or should I give her her unique? Because I broke her unique down, you know, to actually strengthen Gimli's and Droid Calabash. But now I've got the spare accessories again, so I can actually start strengthening her unique if I really wanted, right? 
I could do that. And yeah, maybe next season I could use her with a unique instead of the hit lane. So yeah, I'm not really sure about that just yet. In terms of commanders, so I've been using Arwen in PvP, but I'm not really that happy with how she's been performing. So I'm kind of just going to go back to using, well, obviously I'm going to get Eowyn and Gimli up in levels a bit first. And then I'm just going to go back to using them because Eowyn, she is stun immune, she's madness immune for the first three rounds. And she's obviously basically going to come out uh, on top in terms of any uh, any matchups against focus commanders or focus units because of the quilted armor and focus protection. And then Gimli, he's obviously going to do pretty, he already used to do pretty decent against the Witch King. Not the greatest, but he used to, you know, he used to do enough for my follow-up commander to be able to take the Witch King. But now with, you know, 40% burn damage reduced, that's going to enable me to do a lot better, especially with Guardians on him who have 20% burn damage reduction. So I'll be like a total of 80%, I think, once I've got that uh, superior Hallbuck ma uh, maxed out. Yeah. It's so at three star refinement, I just need another two more stars of refinement there. So they're going to be my, they're my main PvP comms, obviously R17, R13. And then Held at R12, I've got him built up again. I did a video on him recently. You know, the best Helder build, as you can see, it's a full range of tackle. So yeah, I'm going to put him with a bunch of Sentinels. Eagles as well because I am going for that build as you can see guide got that and then got the eagles and stuff going for beast training So yeah, gonna see how he performs I've put thrown him into one or two fights and The one fight he did really bad, but then he went up against a madness commander So, you know, he has nothing against madness unfortunately, so kind of got hammered there But I want to see how he does against a commander, you know, who's not going to be using madness or something against him but yeah, hope you guys did enjoy this quick update video and let me know how you think the season is going to end. I obviously, you know, I, I think obviously we're going to triumph with no problem. But then again, once all this AI is activated, like it could, you know, that cause of how much there is. So yeah, hope you guys did enjoy this video. And if you did, please do drop a like, comment and subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to turn on those post notifications. Anyway, I'll see you guys. Bye.